Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar, run through the UKV, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days, the colder easterly winds are now upon us, it is going to be slowly moving in over the next 48 hours and come Sunday, Monday time we are going to be in a pretty bitterly cold easterly wind especially further southwards and eastwards, some very cold air aloft will be moving in and it will be many areas especially in that eastern portion and southern portions where we have the coldest air moving in will not get much above one or two degrees come monday or tuesday and remember those are the actual temperatures the feel like temperatures will be a few degrees below that the wind chill out there is going to make it feel more like minus one or minus two at best and then of course we've got overnight temperatures which could get down to minus five to even as low as minus 10 in some areas of course many will be interesting are we going to see any snow there is quite a high chance of snow flurries but nothing significant at all so if you are in the southeast or along the east coast there is quite a good chance that there are a few isolated snow showers moving in the ukv is not too interesting in it at this stage but there definitely is some interest looking at the simple synoptics of the pattern so we'll just have to wait and see but we're not expecting anything significant at all but as we head into the longer range, as we'll see from the latest GFS, GM, Eastern OF and the ensembles, we could see the main events of cold and snowy weather. Of course, over the last few days, we've seen Greenland high starting to build on many of the models and confidence has been fairly high, if not some of the highest confidence I've seen in a long term colder pattern. Now, of course, we're always going to see a wobble, and we are seeing that perhaps from the GFS today. The GFS having a little bit of doubts, especially the midnight run, the 6 o'clock run that we're going to actually have a look at in the video, is actually more confident again, uh, whereas the ECMWF has had full confidence, and very few runs are you know, above the minus 5 line at all, really. So seeing a bit of discrepancies between the models today, um, but three main operational runs do kind of all have slightly different outcomes and those outcomes those three outcomes that we are seeing are pretty much what could happen uh, and we'll show you sort of what is looking like the low most likely outcome and what could be the little caveats that we could see in the longer term we'll try and make sure uh, that it all makes sense uh, to see why we're seeing a bit of uncertainty and what could be a longer term evolution but at this stage we are still very confident in cold weather it's just how cold it will get and we'll have to wait and see the next 48 hours or so to see where the models do trend so do remember if you enjoy the videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link is in the description now if you start on the live radar still a few showers around at the moment but you can see they're much more towards coastal areas not moving too far inland as we are now starting to see those winds turn a little bit slacker as the high pressure builds in before they strengthen again through the weekend with an easterly flow you see where the snow where the air is across scandinavia that air mass there that is heading our way very slowly in the next day or two before it comes in pretty briskly through monday and tuesday i said minus 10 to minus 12 degrees could be seen aloft heavy rain was seen in the southeast last night real torrential downpours for many seeing another 20 to 30 millimeters luckily for many of these areas uh, especially if quite far inland we're not expecting to see much precipitation at all within the next week and possibly for some the next precipitation you see is going to be snow so that is a bit of an interesting fact um and yeah we we'll just have to wait and see when the next precipitation does come along because for most the precipitation we're seeing today is the last precipitation we're going to see at least for five days if not longer now of course the temperatures today aren't amazingly mild but they're not amazingly cold either generally around the average point maybe slightly below average and you see lots of lighter yellows and darker blues indicating temperatures around that high single digits maybe even eight nine or ten degrees you see out to our east though bitterly cold across much of northern and eastern europe where we've seen a big cold snap here, minus 30 degrees seen across parts of Scandinavia. Now that extent of cold is not coming our way, but the sort of the peripheries of it, that is moving our way. So the air mass that we're seeing across parts of the Baltic, down towards Eastern Europe, that air mass is moving our way. Of course it will be modified, so it won't be minus 5 or minus 10 like it is across some of these regions, but instead it will be more towards just the general freezing point. And that will be slowly moving in over the coming days. So you can see where the air is coming from. That is where the air is originating for this easterly wind. But of course, the longer range, when we look to our north, it's coming from up here, Greenland, Svalbard, into the north of Scandinavia. 
Now, if you have a look at the latest UK view, you can see the evolution over the course of the next few days. You can see the showers around at the moment, but they are slowly subsiding through this evening. And yes, there could be a few showers across central areas, but most will remain dry. But as you can see, as we head into Saturday afternoon, the wind direction is starting to shift. It's turning more to an easterly. And eventually, through Saturday into Sunday, we could see a few showers in the southeast, but nothing too crazy. That is as the cold air starts to arrive. And by Sunday afternoon, we're all in really quite cold air. Temperatures maybe only 2, 3, 4 degrees dropping as the cold air becomes established. The coldest days are looking likely to be Monday and Tuesday at this stage, just where we see some real cold air moving from the east. You see it's very dry, a few snow flurries further south and eastwards. I do expect there to be more flurries than this is anticipating. Uh, and again, that would just be something that we have to see nearer the time. And then as we progress through Monday into Tuesday, we're really quite cold. Again, it doesn't look too bad here. Lots of sunshine, yes, bits of clouds around, but the temperatures are going to be Bitter indeed. And then as we head into Tuesday, still east to a few showers potentially. And then it turns a lot drier, potentially sunnier. And then again, look in the southwest, could see a bit of precipitation coming in as we of course got lower pressure the further southwards you go so again that is something you need to keep an eye on potentially a bit of precipitation clipping the southwest and you can see how cold the air is because right across the tip of Cornwall we're seeing snow so it just shows you how cold that air mass is and we'll have to keep a very close eye on it Again, we could look at that air mass uh, colder through Saturday, getting down towards the minus 5 line, maybe down to minus 8, but the real cold air arrives through Sunday into Monday. Look at that real big cold pool arriving as we head through Monday to Tuesday there, minus 10 to minus 12 degrees at 850 HPA. Bitterly cold. Again, this one's sustained cold air mass, so it's only going to move through in about 24 to 48 hours, but regardless, it is going to feel bitter out there as that easterly wind comes in. Again, and the mean winds are not going to be anything too ridiculous, but it could be 10 to 20 miles per hour across the east coast. Again, that is going to make the feel like temperature pretty bitterly cold indeed as we progress into next week. Again, if we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see through this afternoon temperatures peaking around the 7, 8, maybe 9 degree mark. But it is slowly edging colder through this evening. Overnight temperatures won't drop away too much with cloud around, but further north to westwards could get down towards freezing. And by Saturday afternoon, more likely 3 to 6 degrees. Come Sunday, though, temperatures overnight quite widely starting to get towards freezing and by Sunday afternoon look at that three or four degrees at best in many areas colder than that especially over higher ground further northwards as we progress into Sunday morning uh, sorry into Monday morning widespread frost pretty much all areas apart from the far east coast where we've got stronger winds holding new temperatures up slightly with a bit of cloud widely down towards uh, minus 1 to minus 5 degrees, maybe as low as minus 10, the further north to west would you go. Towards the centre of the high, of course, it's not quite as cold upper air temperatures, but we will see colder overnight temperatures because we see that air, uh, this uh, radiation uh, allowed to escape to your clearer skies and very, uh, very slack winds, essentially stopping any mixing of the air, such so as allowing the temperature at the surface to so plummet. And look what happens as we head into the afternoon temperatures not getting much above one to four degrees at best that is especially further westwards over higher ground and even into the southeast we've got some wintry showers potentially moving in or clipping could not get a set above one or two and then tuesday overnight temperatures widely below freezing and by the afternoon again struggling to get much above freezing and these normally do trend maybe a degree or two lower as we get nearer the time but yeah it looks pretty bitter indeed and then you're going to get overnight temperatures into wednesday absolutely freezing widely down towards minus two to potentially minus five especially the further south and westward you go as we have got uh, i forgot that very cold air aloft so of course now we'll have a look at the longer range and see what that is showing over the course of the next uh, few weeks now i just want to show you First of all, the ensemble means. Because I said at the start of the video, we have seen a little bit of wobbling, perhaps, from the GFS. 
Now, this is the ensemble mean at day 10. So all the various 30 ensemble members all on top of each other to give us sort of the average that we would expect from those ensemble members. Again, it's pretty, uh, pretty slack in terms of any detail because it is an average of 30 ensemble members. Of course, it would have detail at very close lead times. But in the long range, it's relatively good to have a look at what the overall pattern will be. And I do want you to just take notice of the distinct difference here between the GFS and the ECMWF ensembles at day 10. So this is a week on Monday when the cold air is looking likely to, or is looking likely, if not probable, to really start to push in the bitterly cold air in. Uh, from the northeast. Now you can see here from the GFS we've got application of the jet stream, high pressure building towards Greenland and we do have a northerly wind. But you can see the amplification is not quite as high as the ECMWF which gets it all the way into Greenland and has an even stronger northeasterly. So it doesn't mean the GFS has completely gone away from a colder pattern but you can just see there will definitely be some ensemble members that don't get it anywhere near an amplified meaning, yes, an orderly wind gets in, but it doesn't sustain itself. So that is the difference we're seeing today from the ensemble members. I just wanted to show you these average charts, just to exemplify, uh, just to show you that, um, say why we're seeing perhaps a slight shift from the GFS ensemble members. Some of them are not getting quite as amplified this morning, whereas you can see the East and the UF are remaining very amplified, very blocked, and bitterly cold. You can see the upper air temperatures coming straight in from Svalbard and from the North Pole. Now, if you look at the GFS operational run, of course, this isn't going to be exactly what all the ensemble members are showing, but it does give you uh, sort of an example of what is happening today from the GFS. You can see easterly winds coming in. That is 100% guaranteed. Now, the high pressure retrogresses up towards Greenland, pushes up, and we start to see that northerly wind come in. And interestingly, it looks very similar to the ensemble mean from the GFS. But what happens beyond that? The high pressure topples. Yes, it's very cold northeasterly for a time. There would be wintriness and it would be pretty bitterly cold. And a very cold air mass doesn't move in there. The minus 10 isotherm actually moves in there. Uh, you can see the uh, minus 10 isotherm does just about get in across the east coast. It doesn't quite exemplify it there, but it does just about get in, as we'll see on the, on the ensemble chart. But the high pressure topples, and essentially what that means is the amplification didn't quite get in towards Greenland, which means that the cold weather would only last three, four, five days instead of, instead of potentially a week or longer with multiple rounds. Now here, the high pressure hangs around, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Now this is the midnight run we're looking at, and this was the one that people were commenting on this morning, and, and were very much uh, like, oh, GFS is backing off. Now the six o'clock run, from this morning has colded, uh, trended a little bit colder again. Again, easterly winds coming in. We see that northeasterly blast, a bit more amplification in the jet stream, and the high pressure does slowly topple again, but it doesn't quite collapse and stays more over the top of us. So perhaps trending slightly colder again with a very strong northerly wind, but again, not quite amplifying all the way into Greenland. And that's a trend we've seen in the past on 12 to 18 hours from the GFS. Now, that is one scenario that is possible high pressure doesn't quite amplify and we've seen it numerous times before rarely has it done this when we've had this much confidence in the longer term trends but it is a possibility and we have seen it seen it ruin some of these longer term patterns before now the gm does something slightly different something we haven't actually seen from a lot of model runs and i do think it's a very minority option simply because I don't think I've seen it at all in some of the, uh, in any of the operational runs over the past week or so. But if we do have a look, you can see easterly winds pushing in, high pressure moves up towards Greenland, but it goes too far. So the GFS doesn't get the uh, high pressure up towards Greenland at all. Uh, it gets it just about nudging towards Iceland, maybe towards the southern tip of Greenland, but doesn't quite get it up there. So northerly wind comes in for a time, but not sustained. GEM gets it right towards Greenland and moves it all the way to northern Canada, which essentially does push cold air our way, but also allows the Atlantic to roll in. There is a possibility with that very cold and snowy patterns. We see lots of precipitation come in, but equally we could see just generally uh, pretty unsettled stormy conditions moving in with a southerly tracking jet stream. So colder, but not wintry really. So this is what typically uh, is called a westerly based 
negative NaO. So more west of the North Atlantic, that's where the block sets up, not further eastwards or towards the central North Atlantic. Uh, so essentially, the block is too far west and it allows the zonal flow to move back in. I said a very minority run here from the GM, but it is a possibility. Now, the ECMWF is still going for complete eye candy, I must say. Uh, again, I must stress the ECMWF is probably the most reliable run uh, in terms of verification, so we always have to take that into account, the GFS being the least reliable, but sometimes it can have its days. The, uh, the ECMWF here pulls in that easterly wind, high pressure retrogresses up towards Greenland, fully establishes itself, and we see a northeasterly flow move in. Again, it doesn't move far too far northwards or westwards to become a west base and negative NAO, and it doesn't topple like the G GFS, just pulls in a bitterly cold north to northeasterly wind, proper Arctic air moving in, and would be absolutely frigid in the UK here. Look at that, temperatures way down towards freezing, and it would be absolutely frigid into that longer term. And you see the temperature deviation well below average and potentially significantly below average moving in from the north. So you can see the three different op op uh, options here, all very similar up towards day 10, but then do something slightly different as that high pressure block builds up towards Greenland. It's expected, of course, to see some wobbling, to see some doubt, uh, but these are probably the three most likely outcomes at this stage. I would definitely go more towards the colder blocked run, uh, like the ECMWF, because that's what we have seen the past few days, but the minority runs like the GFS uh, and the GEM runs, you can't, can't uh, completely discount them, but uh, I would say they are a minor possibility at this stage given the confidence we've had in the longer term trends now, if you look at the ensembles you can see it's not completely blown the latest gfs ensemble members you can see it's cold over the next week slightly milder around the 13th 14th high pressure builds in and then you see the big drop again as that north to northeasterly wind arrives again majority of ensemble members are down to minus five to minus ten region cold if not very cold and you can see there is a slight upwards tick in the longer range and that is because of those runs that don't sustain that block, essentially allowing the westerly flow to move back in. So halting the colder spell for only three to five days. So that's the difference we're seeing. You see the maybe five to ten runs there, including the operational run in the longer term, that do sort of allow the high pressure to topple and then essentially go milder uh, or generally more towards average there in the longer term. Now, it is still cold. It's still very cold for at least a time, just not sustained and perhaps potentially not as bitterly cold. Two meter temperatures are still pretty frigid over the next couple of weeks, not getting much above five degrees, two or three degrees next week, then maybe five degrees or so as the high pressure topples, and then back down towards freezing again in the longer term, and potentially more winchiness appearing there. And again, if we look at the ECMWF ensembles, you can see it is broadly very similar, but look right in the extended range. We're not seeing that upwards tick anywhere near as much, indicating the majority of ECMWF ensemble members keep it blocked uh, or sustained uh, or sustain that cold for longer periods. So again, it's very interesting to see what is going to happen over the next couple of weeks. No huge deviations overnight, but I would uh, I just thought it was important just to stress the small little shifts we're seeing from some of the operational runs, some of the ensemble members, just to highlight that there is still some uncertainty in this pattern. There is very high confidence, some of the highest confidence I've had in longer term pattern for a while, but uh, we'll have to just see how it does play out over the next few days. Uh, again, if you're looking for cold or wintry weather, hopefully the GFS is just wobbling a little bit and there's nothing too major. Because, of course, the Eastern DF is generally, as I said, the more favoured run for reliability. But we will just have to see over the next few days. Regardless, though, the one thing I must stress is going to be dry. That's one of the big important things that I think all people on all sides of the spectrum, whether you like cold weather or not, all people would agree that some dry weather over the next week to 10 days is going to be a very good thing, as we are hopefully going to see the ground dry up a little bit. So it means when rain eventually moves back in, which it will do, uh, it is winter, uh, it won't be anywhere near as disruptive as it has been recently. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Uh, make sure you stay up to date as we do have videos coming out daily and we'll keep you updated with all of this cold, all of these colder trends. Uh, and I'll get, of course, have a video out again tomorrow looking at the latest trends from the models. But it is continuing to look very interesting. Potentially, again, historic cold spell if the runs like the Eastern WF come off. If not, if it's more like the GFS or kind of in between, then it will still be cold, if not very cold, potentially wintry as well. We will just have to see. But I must stress, although we've been doing sort of this like fifth, sixth, seventh day of having 
look at models like this. I must stress, it is still pretty ridiculous that we've got this high confidence in colder weather. Not seen these sort of charts for a number of years. So we will just have to see how it does evolve. And of course, I'll keep you updated here. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon. Thank <laughs> you.